on Chicago's on board certified OBGYN. I have not been here for a while, so I'm back and, and ready to go. Um, again, it's Dr. Dawn, Chicago's on board certified OBGYN. My mission is to empower women of all ages with strong medical knowledge and proactive sexual education that will optimize their physical and mental health, thereby strengthening their self-esteem and their motivation to achieve more for themselves. So today, I figured I'd get on board because I have had a number of friends that have either themselves or had friends that had the same complaint and had the same result of these complaints. The main complaint or concerns that they had was heavy vaginal bleeding. Um, and the reason that they were having these, this heavy bleeding was because of fibroid tumors of the uterus. And these women either um, will be go undergoing or did undergo surgery to take care of that problem. So I figured I would start talking about, first of all, what are fibroid tumors? Um, what do they do? What symptoms do you have? And then what are some of the options of treatment that we as physicians will, will offer patients for these symptoms? So first off, what are fibroids? What are fibroids tumors? Um, and when we use the word tumor, oftentimes we are afraid because we're thinking cancer. Where tumors don't necessarily mean cancer. Tumors are any cells that are in the body that grow faster than what they should be growing, and they can form a mass. So that doesn't necessarily mean that they're cancerous or malignant, because malignancy means that those cells are now traveling to other parts in the body. So when we said fibroid tumors, we are talking about cells, muscular cells that are in the uterus themselves, and they just grow and grow and grow on top of themselves. So um, the uterus is the wound of the woman, and that's where when you're pregnant, the baby is uh, found and lives in until you go through labor and you birth the child. So when we say uterus, that is the uh, wound of the woman. And I actually have a picture here. Um, this picture here is actually from my bu upcoming book, but if you can look and see there, that's the uterus. That's the uterus there. And the fibroid or the fibroid tumor is found usually in the muscle, in the muscle of the uterus. And so as you can see, the muscle of the uterus is it can it's thick. It's like thick like steak. And so you have the inside of the uterus, you have the well, thickness of the um, uterus, the, the uh, myometrium or the wall, and then you have the outside of the uterus. And these fibroids can occur any any of those places so move to the right I'm trying to move to the right so when you have a fibroid they start off as small cells that grow and they can get a variety of sizes so they can be small like a, a marble or like a, um, a pea they can get bigger to where they're the size of a peach or a tangerine an orange they can get as big as a cantaloupe, uh, even a watermelon, depending on uh, what's going on with the patient. So typically, women come in because they're having symptoms from these fibroid tumors, and uh, the tumors themselves will cause the symptoms because they're getting bigger. So usually, women will come in with symptoms of pressure, I feel bloated all the time, and um, feel like I can't lose this weight, but mostly they come in because of feeling like they're bloated. They can also come in with symptoms of heavy bleeding. Uh, because these fibroids can be anywhere in the uterus, uterus, meaning it can be on the inside of the uterus, in the wall thickness of the uterus, or on the outside, when they occur on the inside of the uterus, they interrupt the endometrium, which is the what can be create, well, can create the placenta, but it's the lining of the uterus that every month women will shed. So if the fibroid is right on the surface there, it will grow and cause bleeding outside of what you get with your menstrual cycle. So that's why women would have symptoms of this potentially irregular bleeding or heavier bleeding with their menstrual cycles. 
So they may, instead of have, having three to five days of bleeding, they may have seven, 10 to days of bleeding, and it can be heavy. Um, sometimes, because the fibroids are there, they also cause severe cramping. So when these ladies are on their menstrual cycles, they're just kind of bedridden almost because of the severe cramping that they have. So symptoms, like I said, you can have feeling like you're bloating, you can have abnormal bleeding, and just just from the sheer growth, they can get larger and larger, larger, and, and there's only so many, uh, so far it can go until it's just causing so much problems that we have to intervene. Um, and again, some of the symptoms that we get is painful uh, sexual intercourse because the uterus is attached to the cervix. That's our cervix there at the bottom. This is your vagina there. And so depending on where it's located, it can be painful during uh, sexual intercourse. So a lot of times any of the above are why women are coming into the office to come and see me. So um, other things to kind of know about the fibroids, they can run in the family. So if your mom or your sister has it, it's not uncommon to find uh, women who also have fibroids. Now, just because you have fibroids don't mean, doesn't mean that you'll have those symptoms. The fibroids don't necessarily have to grow bigger and bigger and bigger. In fact, um, I had a, a lady that came in because she wanted to get pregnant, we uh, removed the fibroid and then it came right back. It didn't get any bigger, but it did come back. Yes, and um, I actually, I'm looking at some of the questions that are popping off. So if you see me stopping and then, uh, that's because I see questions. And so one question that is up is, it, are they more prevalent in the African-American community? And they are more prevalent in the African-American community community up to maybe 30% more, but we do see them more so, um, or we see a, a higher incidence of it in African American, but they occur in all women um, if, they're, if they're gonna be present. So the question is, okay, I've been given this diagnosis of a fibroid, what do I need to do? And the question is, okay, what symptoms are you having? Sometimes I have ladies that come in and they've been a patient of somebody else and they say, hey, I know I have fibroids, but they're not really bothering me. I ask them about their menstrual cycle. The cycle maybe lasts five days. They're used to it. They're not extremely tired with it or even afterwards. And so I say that if the fibroids are not impacting your day-to-day -day living, then we don't have to do anything about it. Because um, like I said, you can have a fibroid. It may not get bigger or it may get bigger and stop. And then we just kind of sit tight and we don't have to do anything. Um, the other things we can look into are medicines. With the previous talk that I talk about, talked about, we talked about contraception and different contraceptions that we can use to help with heavy bleeding. Sometimes these can help even with the fibroids being present. Now, if they're really big, then, then they may not work that much. But sometimes, depending on the size of them and how much extra bleeding you're having, we can put you on something like a birth control pill, and that might decrease the bleeding a much to the point where we don't have to in intervene outside of that. Um, depending on where that fibroid is located, whether it's on the inside or more so on the outer parts of the uterus, you still might be a candidate for a potential IUD. Typically, what we'll do is get a pelvic ultrasound. Sometimes we'll get what's called a sonohistogram. The difference is with the ultrasound, it's just radio, uh, radio waves that are shown and they can give us an image uh, on the screen of where that fibroid is. Uh, with the sonohistogram, we actually infuse that uterus with uh, fluid or saline while we're doing the ultrasound. So it opens up the inside cavity of the uterus and then we can see, okay, specifically where is this fibroid located? Is it located more so on the inside of the uterus or is it on the outside of the uterus? And then what potentially does that cavity look like when it's opened up with fluid? Um, meaning that is that fibroid encroaching inside that cavity or is it a normal cavity and the fibroid is actually on the outside and we might want to know that because sometimes you have the bleeding because of fibroids sometimes you have the bleeding because of something else you can have maybe a polyp there which typically again is benign or non-cancerous but it can give you a irregular bleeding so uh, we talked about some of the symptoms and 
I talked briefly about the modalities that we use. Typically, we'll get an, an ultrasound. Sometimes we'll get an MRI because that's even more specific in terms of telling us where that fibroid is located and the size of it. Um, and then some of us, depending on what the age of the patient is, we may set you up for what's called an endometrial biopsy. Uh, so if you have irregular bleeding, and let's say you're over the age of 35 or so, we'll get what's called an endometrial biopsy because that will let us know whether that tissue that's inside the uterus is normal and you're just bleeding heavy or whether it's potentially something else. And when I say, is it something else, I'm saying, is it precancerous or even cancerous cells? Now, typically, ladies, you don't have to worry about it being precancerous or cancerous cells when you are still having regular menstrual cycles. Um, but we do look into it just to be sure because sometimes those things are present, not necessarily cancer, but early precancerous uh, cells. So if you come in and you have irregular bleeding, what typically will happen is your doctor will do an exam. Um, if you or are on, um, specifically if you need a pap smear, you will get the pap smear at that time too, because that way we can look inside the vagina, look at your cervix and make sure visually it looks okay. Um, so we'll start with the pelvic exam and the pap smear. You guys have a lot of questions, I'm, I'm very happy. So, uh, and I'm gonna to get to those questions. So you'll start with the exam, you'll have the pap smear, and we'll do with the exam the bimanual. When we do the bimanual, ladies, that's because we wanna get an idea of how uh, large that fiber it is or if the uterus is enlarged. So typically, if you have a uterus and you've not been pregnant and you're not currently pregnant, not that large, maybe four to eight centimeters, if that. So that's not very small. I mean, not very large at all. So if you have a substantial fibroid, we typically will fill it when we're doing the exam. So if we are doing the exam, we fill it, and you've already given us uh, some symptoms of potentially a fibroid is there, then we follow you up with the uh, imaging modalities like the ultrasound, the sonohistogram or sono ultra ultrasound, and or an MRI. And then we typically will have you come back and we'll talk about what are the methods of treatment that we need to do for you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop it here. I'm gonna try to see if I can get some more of my questions. Uh, and this is for one young lady. She had a cyst on her uterus 10 years ago. Can that be a pre-fibroid? So, my question would be, would that be a cyst on your ovary or a cyst in your uterus? And I say that because more than likely it's a cyst in your ovary because those are pretty common. We uh, ovulate every month and you ovulate from one ovary to the next side of the, the uh, you ovulate on the other ovary, you go back and forth and the area that that egg or ovum is released from, sometimes it fills with fluid and it can cause a cyst. Very common, not a big deal. Sometimes the cyst will continue to have fluid in it and it'll get larger, but this is on your ovary. It's probably not on your uterus. So um, can it be a pre-fibroid? If it is truly a cyst of the ovary, probably not. And it's probably uh, not a problem for you uh, because we have cysts typically maybe every month or every other month you may have a small cyst, small meaning one to two centimeters. And I'm saying centimeters, guys. I'm not saying inches. So that's pretty small if you think about it. But uh, if it were a fibroid and a small fibroid, it's a possibility that yes, it's still there. Um, sometimes they get larger, sometimes they don't. So the real thing is to get in to get your um, exam, especially if you're due for a pap, uh, but your doc will do an exam with you, a pelvic exam, and let the doc tell you. And you tell the doctor, hey, I had a fibroid, does it, Feel like the uterus is normal size are my ovaries enlarged if she or he is doing an exam and it's kind of tender when they're doing the exam you need to let them know because that is an indication that potentially we need to do further work up with you so I am going to stop here guys I could talk all evening but what I'm gonna do is come back and talk to you in the next day or so because I want to talk to you about the potential treatments that we have available for women 
that uh, have heavy vaginal bleeding because of a fibroid uterus. The cool thing is that you don't necessarily have to have surgery and that's really what a lot of ladies are kind of fearful about is, oh, I have something wrong, I have to have surgery. That is not the case, but I will tell you in some instances that is probably the best uh, option for you. So uh, we're, again, talked about what fibroids are and what they um, symptoms they give us. When I come back and talk with you guys, we're gonna talk about what the, uh, some of the treatments that are out there for you that don't necessarily mean surgery and then we'll talk specifically about surgery and, and what that entails. So great that you guys came and talked to me again. This is Dr. Dawn, Chicago's own board certified OBGYN. Um, if you enjoyed this talk, please like my Facebook page, uh, follow me on Twitter or Instagram or YouTube. On all modalities or all social media, I am Dr. Dawn OBGYN. That is Dr. Dawn with an E, OBGYN. And please stay tuned because I have an audiobook coming up that is going to be free. If you um, go to my Facebook page and just put your email in there, I will make sure that you get that. And that is an audio book that is a synopsis of the conversations on contraception that I did uh, a while back. So thanks again, and um, I will be back to chat with you again soon. Bye, guys.